Up next on the Mary Port, a successful author and actress visits our area campus. And later, a club that mystified some is trying to capture a couple more. That's right, it's Dungeons and Dragons. Grab your flower crowns and glitter. I have the 2018 Coachella lineup. And in sports, we have a profile on a pitcher that's heating up. The Mary Port starts now. Thank you for joining us on the Mary Port. I'm Giovanni Carrillo. And I'm Nekta Skandari. The long anticipated wait is now over. Actress, author, and activist Diane Guerrero finally made it to our campus. She was welcomed with cheers and applauses from the MSU Denver and the Auraria campus. Guerrero went on to talk about her family's struggle as undocumented immigrants and her work as an activist within the community all of which were touched upon in her new book, In the Country We Love. After her speech, the author gave some time for the audience to interact, ask questions, or share concerns they might have. The book ended with the book signing, uh, the event, sorry, ended with a book signing and pictures with attendees. She understands it's hard to not be here with your parents and be able to live without them, but she's still able to go through it day by day, and she's still fighting for her parents to be here with her legally. Graduation is right around the corner, which means it's almost time for seniors to pick up their cap and gowns. MSU Denver students graduating in May can pick up their cap and gowns on May 1st and 2nd at St. Cajetan's from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. There will be a $10 fee for parking on commencement day, and students will be able to purchase a parking pass. As the end of the semester approaches, many students are thinking about taking newfound knowledge and applying it to the workforce. Next week, Career Services is hosting a Start Smart Salary Workshop in which w this workshop will improve your understanding of your earning, uh, your earning potential. Some of the uh, topics that will be covered are how to negotiate your uh, first salary out of college, how do the gender wage gap affects your life, and how the budget based on your target salary. Attending this workshop will give the tools you need to confidently ask for a spare salary. The workshop will be held next Tuesday, April 10th at from 2 to 4 in the Tivoli room 320. From a, for additional information, visit Career Services uh, on MSU Denver's website. If you're looking to improve uh, strength, breathing, and flexibility, then this event uh, may be just for the thing for you. Next Tuesday, April 10th at 2 p.m., Adaptive Yoga will be held in the PE building in room 201. Individuals find their comfort level in yoga and increase body awareness. This class is free and open to all students, faculty, and staff. You can register for this event on the MSU Denver events calendar page to participate. Every year, people remember those who lost their loved ones in a Holocaust. In the years between 1933 and 1945, a mass murder of about six uh, million Jews people took place. If you would like to learn more about how the Holocaust happened, there will be an event in the Student Success Building, room 213, to explain one of the greatest tragedy in history on Tuesday, April 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. They will, be they will cover how the Nazis gained the power of life and death over the European Jews, how concentration camps were created, organized, and operated, and how it affected the victims and perpetrators. If you've wondered why Dungeons & Dragons has hugged so many people for decades, you have a chance to figure out how to play right here on campus. The Dungeons & Dragons Club has an open house this Tuesday, April 10th. This one is a role play game where participants use their imagination to collaboratively go on an adventure to a world filled with magical creatures. There will be players with all levels of experience at 5 p.m. at the lobby of the second floor in the Student Success Building. This game is a great way to make friends and create a community. And good morning, everybody. It's a pretty crazy morning this morning. It is snowy and a little bit, not a little bit breezy. Um, our current radar shows a little bit clouds right over here. We have some rain in the mountain range. Um, currently, it's 23 de degrees in Denver. It feels like nine degrees. Definitely a huge difference from this past week. Um, the wind is going northeast at 18 miles per hour. Today is going to be a high of 30 degrees. Definitely some snow and wind with our weather for today. Um, by 12 p.m. right now, we're, at, we're going to be at 23 degrees, at 4 p.m. 28 degrees, and 8 p.m. at 25 degrees. 
Tonight we're looking at 22 degrees with some early sh snow showers and it's going to be still snow and rainy. Uh, some top stories are coming up. Our winter weather is going to be returning throughout this weekend and next week it's going to be warming up and we also have an extended outlook. And later, we look at the untimely death of Caesar Golden. And senior citizens spoke their mind on health care at the Capitol. Last Wednesday, seniors at the Capitol were gathered at, uh, at Colorado to talk about senior care, and there were a ton of citizens who were there and elected officials, uh, elected officials as well, and we heard what needed to be done. Once a year, the state capitol fully embraces the name, the People's House. When hundreds of senior citizens filled the old Supreme Court chamber to listen to and discuss with the state's elected officials. How many of you, this is your first time here for Senior Day at the Capitol? All right. On the status of senior citizen care. It's one of those feel good days. When you leave here today, you'll have a little bit of information. You'll be feeling better about your country and maybe even about your state. Well, I'm excited by all the enthusiasm and the number of people that are here that represent seniors. It is the single largest growing portion of our population. It's exciting to be in the old Supreme Court chambers with oxygen tanks and walkers and people who are here to actually hear what the legislators have to say, find out what they're doing for them. we got to make sure we have the appropriate infrastructure so that you know, people can enjoy a high quality of life as they, you know, in their, in their golden years. This year, there were a couple of differences from years past. We've actually hired somebody here who is in charge of aging. That's his full-time job, is to think about the intersection of transportation, housing, health care with the aging population. I think some of the attendees are getting younger. And so in the past, we've had some who were definitely in their 80s and 90s, um, but not so much this year. I'm noticing that they're a younger group, and I think that's exciting because we need to get them more energized at a younger age about what's going to be an impact on them in their later age. After a morning of listening, the afternoon became a time for discussion. As with any issue, there is always more to be done. Uh, the second thing is, I think housing is probably top of mind. You know, we've made a lot of advancements in health care. I don't think we've made the same advancements in housing, and that's going to be a huge priority for me. Well, there are hundreds of concerns, right? They're everywhere, right? Is how long do people work before they retire? How do we afford extended retirements? We may not agree. We'll never agree to agree. But let's agree to disagree and move on. For the Met Report, Avery Anderson. As the largest retailers in the United States, Walmart is looking to buy the health insurance company, Humana. Although nothing is uh, certain yet, according to the public rec uh, reports, the two companies are in talks about merging together. Amazon has been a strong competitor against Walmart for a couple of years, and they both have been expanding in an attempt to end uh, to one-up each other. This move, this to uh, purchase Humana may just put Walmart ahead of Amazon if the arrangements move forward. McDonald's CEO Steve Easterbrooks is facing severe backlash after having stated back in 2015 that he would give its corporate-owned uh, store employees a dollar raise above minimum wage. Three years after becoming pre uh, president and CEO of the company, he has not kept his promise and employees have yet to see this dollar increase. They are now uh, demanding that Easterbrooks keep his promise and give the employees that raise. Many of them have taken part of the Fight for 15 campaign by revealing their pay subs and the absence of that dollar raise. Schools across Oklahoma and Kentucky have been closed for several days as thousands of teachers and students march for better education pay. An estimated 36,000 teachers flooded the state capitol building demanding greater teacher pay and school funding. The funding for schools has been cut 30% per student, causing schools to only be open for four days out of the week. 
Without the needed funding, classrooms are not able to be heated during the winter and outdated textbooks are being given to students. Frustrated parents also protested in hopes of better education for their kids. The governor has not yet shown any indication to implement changes in funding. From manga to video games, this anime fest welcomed all fandoms alike. Our reporter Ahmed Ojan takes a deeper look. For the third year in a row, the Colorado Anime Fest has returned to Denver, Colorado. This year is at the Renaissance Hotel. It is a convention where the community of cosplayers come together to play video games and to interact with each other. They also come to win prizes or to compete in cosplaying contests. My first uh, uh, Colorado Anime Fest, and I am highly impressed. Um, the, the, the folks that have put this on have just uh, outdone them themselves. Uh, it's perfect. Um, very, very well run, and uh, and you know, just seeing the the looks on uh, all of the attendees' faces and all the fun that they're having, and uh, and just how well run it is, uh, it's just uh, it's perfect. I'm super excited to be a part of it. And they have the opportunity to meet with David Vincent, <coughs> the voice actor of Ticken, for an autograph. The Colorado Anime Fest is a great event that cosplayers have to come together and networking with each other and to meet new people as well. If you are interested, visit www.coaf.com for more information. This is Ahmed Ojan reporting for the Med Report. This past Monday, a grass fire in Grand Junction led to an evacuation of 300 houses. Authorities are now investigating the causes of the fire, but is still under investigation. However, officials say it could have been caused by locals. Firefighters were looking to seize the fire all night until early Tuesday morning. Along with the evacuation, residents also experienced a power outage. Of As of now, there are no confirmed deaths. Michael Brown, a 17-year-old from Houston, applied and got accepted to 20 top universities with full-ride scholarships and $260,000 in additional scholarship offers. From the 20 universities, he has his eyes set on Harvard, Princeton, Northwestern, Yale, Stanford, Vanderbilt, and the University of Pennsylvania. He credits his number one supporter, his mother, for her unconditional love and never-ending encouragement. Brown will tour each of the schools before he makes his final decision on May 1st. Our reporter Juan Arellano tells us how aviation accidents have affected our community this past week. Since the beginning of the year, 24 fatal accidents involving smart airplanes and helicopters have occurred in the United States. 46 people have died due to these accidents, with one of the most recent incidents happening in Caddo County in Oklahoma on March 26, when two people were found dead, dying instantly the previous night due to the aircraft crashing because of the bad weather. One of these people aboard the aircraft was Cesar Gomez, a professional quarter horse jockey that grew up in the city of Fort Lupton, Colorado. With just 27 years of age, Gomez started competing at Remington Park and other racetracks since 2014 winning 245 races and more than $5.4 million. With all his family and friends present in the stands, this past Saturday, one of the races at Remington Park was in honor of Cesar Gomez. Without a doubt, his death left a huge impact in the horse racing community and in our community. For the Mayor Report, Juan Arellano. Zuckerberg founder and CEO of Facebook has agreed to testify before a congressional committee. This week, the date for the, his, uh, this testimony has been set as April 11th. In the last week, Facebook has come under increasing uh, pressure. Last week, Facebook announced that 50 million users were affected. This week, they have confirmed at least 87 million users were in, influenced by the campaign to manipulate election results. While Mark Zuckerberg has initially been ap apologetic for the role as his company played in the event, he has refused to step down as CEO. His testimony is eagerly uh, awaited by U.S. government officials and over one billion worldwide users. On Tuesday, a tragic, uh, tragic shooting happened, leaving four wounded and the shooter dead from what happened to be a self-inflicted gunshot. YouTube encounters its employees to take encourages its employees to take time off or do work from home to recover from the traumatic event. The shooter has been identified as Nasim Agdam, a 38-year-old woman. This homicidal act is bizarre. In fact, 
that roughly 10, uh, 10 to 13% of homicidal events are caused by women, according to a